Ah, ça Mike's Daily Podcast. F F F episode 1400. Oh my gosh, yesterday I did so much work on my website. I'm still trying to get all my interviews uh, alphabetized. 1466. 1466. It is the number six today. That number that gets so. Why does everyone criticize that number so much? Mike's. Daily podcast. It got somehow got associated with Satan, and everybody's been putting that number down. And I, th- I think it's got to stop. Mike's Daily Podcast. A number six kind of looks to me like the letter G. And if you don't like G, then there's something wrong with V. Cause G is a word that's arts a lot of great word letters starts. The word, the letter starts a lot of great words. And there's some, perhaps, that you have never heard, like Gigabyte. Mike's Daily Podcast. Gigabyte. Gigabyte. That's a great word that didn't exist when I was born. Now it does. Mike's Actually, it did. Daily. No, wait, it didn't, did it? Podcast. I think it was kind of... Yeah! Nah. 68 was an interesting year. I think in 1968, we realized that our world was messed up. But, you know, in a lot of ways, our world hasn't changed since 1968. We still have, we still fight. And we're still embroiled and... And the curriculum at... What the hell? (laughs) Guy had a bad voice. Unlike mine, which is wonderful. Hey, look who just walked in. Hello, my Matthews. It's Shelly. It's Q Hearts Gift Shop Supervisor. Your voice is all right. Thank you, Shelly. But you have a lovely voice. Thank you. You have a lovely singing voice. A lovely singing voice. So sing it loud. Sing your life. Mike Matthews, what's that? It is a Morrissey song. Ah. Oh. What are you, nuts? Look who else walked in. This is Floyd the Floor Man! And, and this is John Deere the Engineer. My gigabyte did not exist until 1985. Interesting theory. Wow. I mean... It's 130% true. Or hypothesis or whatever. So, yeah. I love people. And here's today's podcast picture. And I love the number six, and I love the number, the letter G, and I love the word G, and I love the uh, podcast picture today is of another beautiful sunset. Why not stay with this theme of sunsets? Sunrise, sunset, and it is in fact a sunset from, I guess a couple weeks ago. No, this was on Tuesday. I think it was when I did this picture. I was over there by Fairmont Ridge and it was still during the fires and the fire, you know, we had rain last night. If you're not in the Bay Area, we had some rain. So those fires, their days are numbered and I think they're pretty much well contained. Now comes the issue of uh, people going back to their homes that were burned. What is the detail of Le Nomad? by artist Jaume Plensa in Antibes, France. Oh, wow. Check that out on Bing. Not to give Bing a plug, but I love the pictures they have on Bing. Wow, it's like uh, this monument with all these letters, and it's got a sunset in the background. Almost looks like they're having fires where they are, but I don't think. I don't think so. Yes. so the... Uh, thing that I was talking about that I completely forgot was the number six is a wonderful number. Oh, the fires. People going back to their fu- uh, to their homes. And this is something I have not really heard before. People going, oh, don't go back to your house. Don't go back because it's all the chemicals melted down. And you're going to, you know, just think you had all that cleaning fluid in your house to clean your of uh, your sink and your showers and that's melted down you've got some other stuff that all the plastic that's melted down just all the synthetic stuff we use in our society melted down is not good for you 
And they're like, oh, all these people are going back to their houses in shorts and t-shirts when they should be in hazmat outfits. Don't do it. It's a trap. It's a trap. So people are doing that. And once again, the MXL condenser microphone is popping up on the computer pages I'm looking at. Which brings me to how I love people. And I, I guess I could say that I have, I've talked about Bob before. Bob emailed me from and called me from the great country that we call California. I mean, Oregon, the great state of Oregon in the country known as America. And in Oregon, which by the way, if you did not know, is in the country of America. Uh, he, Oregon, so he emailed me about the eclipse and he told me, I ran into him yesterday as I was walking the wonderful Basil the Boxer. And he's like, you know, I didn't even tell you about the hotel I stayed at. It was a scary, crazy mess up there in Oregon. This weird, like not even a star, not even half a star rated hotel. And the, the woman looked like Kathy Bates. And there was just, it, she apparently was a hoarder. And, and she had like saved all this stuff. You've got a dirty, whorish mouth. You have. Uh, all this stuff in her hotel office when you walked in and Bob needed something and apparently she had three of them whatever it was Bob didn't tell me specifically but he said yeah he he was actually texting me uh, the story that I then relayed to you on the podcast he was texting me from the hotel parking lot because there apparently there was no Wi-Fi so he had to go out in the parking lot and he said it was not there was one table in their quote unquote restaurant and the continental breakfast was scary and unsanitary and ick. But he also, t- I, you know, we were discussing my foot because my right foot, if you have not kn- listened to many a podcast that I've done lately, I've been talking about my foot. In fact, I had a show called Boot because I love Canadians and they say a boot. But my f- foot uh, was hurting because of something I pulled in it I got a stress fracture in it. Oh, and by the way, I got the bill from the doctor. $170 for that visit. Thank you so much. And insurance covered like $10 of that. Thank you, stupid insurance I get through work. But whatever. Thank you. I'm blaming... Uh, I don't blame Obamacare anymore. I blame Trump for everything. Everything. Because he's president now, and so he gets to be criticized. That's how it works, right? Because he said this. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. Yeah, well, you have these magic powers, Trump. And so you should be the best president ever with your magic powers. But all my life, I've heard that decisions are much different when you sit behind the desk in the Oval Office. In other words, when you're president of the United States. Wait, are you telling me... That when you sit behind the desk in the Oval Office, that means you're president of the United States? That's insane! I never connected the two! Oh. Okay. Well, that was informative. Oh. Well, okay. Uh, we So the podcast picture was that wonderful sunset going on over there at the Fairmont Ridge. And you can see that picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com. And there is also at mikesdailypodcast.com all the ways to help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy because you're maybe going to buy shoes. Because, for example, Bob has told me all about, here's some links. He gave me some links to 510s. And may I just say, Amazon is not the only game in town. I, I, I produce a show for this guy that talks money in the morning, and he seems to go on and on and on about Amazon and Apple, the two A's in the tech industry. And I'm like, a dude, there are so many other places to shop online than Amazon, and there's so many. There's Samsung. And that's uh, an and, and LCHC whatever, and the other cell phone smartphone makers not just apple 
and they're of uh, Windows and whatnot. So many competitors. But according to Bob and Shoes, uh, Scarpia, oh, he said 510 is a great shoe, and Scarpia, they make some really nice shoes, he says. Italian company, been making shoes for centuries and really have comfort dialed in. La Sportiva brand is another Italian company I trust and I own a few pairs. He's really trying to help me with my foot because apparently my foot doctor told me the reason why I hurt my foot was because I was wearing shoes that were too loose and too beaten up, which is true, true, true. And without a word, I, when I told my ex-wife, I saw my ex-wife a week ago at my ex-brother-in-law's wedding. And I told her about my foot and she goes, you wear the crappy shoes. You wear the crappiest shoes. You got to stop. You're just like your mom. And she's right. But the, he, Bob is helping me out. He said the Approach Pro, uh, he, oh yeah, he had those on yesterday and they look really cool and comfortable. He was going on and on about how comfortable they are. The Guide Tenny, he says, I have six pair of the older version before 2015. They made them stiffer, but they still get great reviews. I'm just not a fan of the new models. And he also said, and you know what, Bob? You should have a segment, Bob's Shoes, right here on Mike's Daily Podcast. And so Scarpia, the Scarpia Zen, he says good. The Scarpia Mojito. Well, that's a cool name for a shoe. Name it after a drink that I love. Hmm. And and then he he actually points out that there's some sites to go to other than Amazon. Uh, and awesome. All right. Oh, try Sierra Trading Post online. That's a great. Uh, now, if you do that and don't go through mikesdailypodcast.com, that won't help me out. But thanks. You if you do shop on Amazon, go through mikesdailypodcast.com, and it helps me out. Thank you. And there's also the PayPal if you'd like to help us out that way. You'll become an inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster, which is a wonderful thing to be. So people going back to their houses and they're, they're full of the toxins. And that's a big worry because here in the Bay Area, we freak out over every little thing. During the fires, I saw so many people with masks on. And then without the fires, people still have masks on. If people get sick, they wear masks here in the Bay Area. And it's so funny because in other parts of the country, people just cough on you left on left and right, and it's okay. And as I said before, I was raised by a mom who smoked around me constantly. Smoked while I was in utero. And I'm not saying that was right. In fact, I'm saying I was wrong. And I, d- I, I don't say it as good as he does. Wrong. There we go. And it just needed to stop. So I think we here in in the Bay Area are conscious of these things that can hurt other people. Secondhand smoke, for example. And when people start, smokers start complaining about how they can't smoke places anymore. Oh, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You are damaging other people's lungs. Shut up. So, oh, and here's someone saying that exact same thing. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. But with a lot more vigor. So CIA director Mike Pompeo, not to be confused with that beautiful woman from that hospital TV show, Ellen Pompeo. That's her name, isn't it? Ellie Pompeo? Uh, from the show with that used to have Katherine Heigl on it. And Sandra O, oh, is it? I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't watch TV. Mike, uh, so CIA Director Mike Pompeo said the U.S. has to act as if North Korea is on the verge of being able to strike it with a missile and act accordingly. And that President Donald Trump is doing so. From a U.S. policy perspective, we ought to behave as if we are on the cusp of them achieving that objective, he said yesterday at a security forum held by the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. They are so far along in that it's now a matter of thinking about how do you stop that final step. Whether it happens on Tuesday or a month from Tuesday, we're in a time where the president has concluded that we have a global effort to ensure that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un does not obtain that capacity. He is among, Pompeo is among a number of former officials 
who have been signaling the increased possibility of a slide into a military confrontation with North Korea over its refusal to back down from its nuclear program. The CIA chief spoke at the forum shortly before National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster, who also said the president wasn't prepared to accept a nuclear Pyongyang. The uh, Trump administration comments came a day after former CIA director John Brennan put the chances of military conflict with North Korea as high as 20 to 25 percent. Now, George W. Bush, oh my gosh, he, he said some things. Let's see if I can. In a changing economy, discontent deepened and sharpened partisan conflicts. Bigotry seems emboldened. Our politics seems more vulnerable to conspiracy theories. Who's he talking about? Outright fabrication. There are some signs that the intensity of support for democracy itself has waned. I know what's good and bad. among the young, who never experienced the galvanizing moral clarity of the Cold War. WikiLeaks! I love WikiLeaks! on the ruin of entire nations by socialist central planning. Nobody ever told me that politics was going to be so much fun. Forgotten the dynamism that immigration has always brought to America. We're moving things along and we're moving them along fast. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build a very inexpensive. In the wake of protectionism. Our country must show resolve and resilience in the face of external attacks, ocracy. And that begins with confronting a new era of cyber threats. That's right. George Bush had a lot to say, a rare political speech, George W., in which he warned of threats to American democracy, a decay of civil engagement, a message that was interpreted as a rebuke of President Trump's divisive leadership style. At a New York forum sponsored by his presidential center, Bush offered a blunt assessment of a political system corrupted by conspiracy theories and outright fabrication in which nationalism has been distorted into nativism. I love that sentence. Thank you. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden I like George W. Bush. That's crazy. What the heck? You know, in some ways, Obama just kept doing what Bush was doing in some, in some ways. The whole thing of bailing us out, that got started with Bush. People always blame Obama, but when we went further into debt to bail us out after the economic downturn, but Trump got us started on it. I mean, uh, Bush got us started, and everybody confuses Bush with Trump. I don't know what it is. It's that, that you in the middle of that damn name. So... That's what Bush had to say. He did not mention Trump by name. And former aides emphasized that his message echoed words he had spoken before. But the fact that a former president was sounding the alarm about American values and the United States role in the world at a time when Trump has unsettled allies abroad and provoked intense political backlash at home injected his remarks with greater urgency. And Bush has been out of the political spotlight since leaving office amid low popularity in 2009. Barack, however, when he left office, had a high high popularity. Um, And he made a point not to criticize or second-guess his Democratic successor, Barack Obama. Uh, Just hours after he completed his speech, Obama also uh, made a veiled critique of the Trump era, calling on Democrats at a New York or rather a New Jersey campaign event to quote, send a message to the world that we are rejecting a politics of division and we are rejecting politics of fear. Um, And Bush also said, we've seen our discourse degraded by casual cruelty, bullying and prejudice in our public life sets a national tone and provides permission for cruelty and bigotry. The only way to pass along civic values is to first live up to them. Very interesting. So the guy that would probably go, who cares what George W. Bush says? Steve Bannon. He is going to be in California. The California Republican Party's decision to invite him to address its convention today created an unsettled concoction of excitement, dread, and rubbernecking curiosity for GOP loyalists in California. The keynote speech will be in Anaheim, actually, 
is scheduled less than a week after Bannon, who runs the far-right website Breitbart News. He called for a season of war on the GOP establishment. The threat was aimed squarely at Republicans in Washington, whom Bannon considers disloyal to Trump and the conservative agenda. He will appear before a California GOP desperate to reverse its deteriorating influence in a state where it has been losing members and where Republican victories in statewide political races have been non-existent for decades. Well, for a decade. That's true. This is a very, very blue state now. And it was funny, I was telling a couple of my friends about my trip to Florida, that my Californian friends yesterday, as I was in California and in Podcastro Valley, and I was telling them, you know, when I had dinner in Florida with a bunch of Floridians that my mom knows because she lives in Florida and she's surrounded by Floridians. They were all asking me, is California really going to secede from the union? Are you guys really going to leave? They were so worried. And I'll tell you why. We freaking, we do, so many people deny this, but I mean, when I moved out of California, I'm looking at everything I was eating at the supermarket when I was living in Alabama, and everything came from California. All right, all right, all right. I mean, it was all from here. So, what the heck? If we're gone, what's the rest of the country going to do? They're worried. We don't really care here. I don't talk to anyone about, hey, I can't wait till we leave the union. It's so funny. It was a Texas thing for so long, and our population is way bigger than Texas anyway. Cafe anyway. And so there you go. That's what... Anyway. Finally, Apple, which is located their headquarters just down the street from me. Well, actually pretty, pretty close to Fremont. Apple's best ever iPhone is coming soon, but the harsh reality for Apple is it may not come soon enough and insignificant enough to quantities to avert a very nasty surprise. According to Reuters, which also cites China's influential economic daily news, Apple has had to take the unprecedented decision to slash production of the iPhone and iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus for near, by nearly 50% due to lack of demand. There is a lack of demand for the iPhone 8. A source for the Economic Daily News says, this is the first time in iPhone history that production had to be cut so soon after launch. In fact, Apple is more used to the opposite. Uh, Lines around the block and such high demand and lemmings. People going, I want my Apple. I want my Apple. Remember that? Remember that like eight, seven years ago? People just going nuts over the latest iPhone. It, it figures are impacted simply because it cannot build enough. The news comes following rumors that sales of the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus have been modest. But if both Reuters and the Economic Daily News are correct, it appears Apple's 2014 base designs are simply past their sell-by date. And people don't like that facial recognition thing. Because it just, it's, it, it, it's not, it's not a good method. It makes people uneasy. People, you know what? Why are there so many mirrors? Why do people love selfies? Why do people use that little thing in the camera, in the phone that t- turns the camera around so they can take pictures of themselves and see themselves as they're doing it? Why do people make so many annoying YouTube videos where they go, hey guys, it's because they love looking at their face. They love their faces. <sighs> we will learn more. And, and now Apple's like, yeah, just put your face in front of the phone. It'll unlock it. Don't make me... Do something with my face. Leave my face alone. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. I think we have faced a lot in this show. We faced the number six, the letter G, and the things that are going on in our world. Should you be worried? No. I, I think that we... I'm going to be optimistic is what I want to do. And I'm going to be, hey, it's Friday. And I'm all about optimism on Friday. That's how it is. So enjoy your weekend. I will probably talk to you on Sunday if all things go well. And thank you for your help. If you have any suggestions about my foot, you can always call me. 336-MM-DAILY. 336-MM-DAILY. Next show, it's going to be Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. 
Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.